Guys, commodities have been all the rage lately, silver notwithstanding. However, things have not been completely clear in the silver complex. This video is a continuation of the series, which covers the SIL and SILJ ETFs, SIL and SILJ, which are the Global X Silver Miners ETF and the Junior ETFMG Prime Junior Silver Miners ETF. So we're gonna start off with SIL, SIL. This pattern is looking very much like a corrective wave up. We have what looks like, well, you could count this as a one, two, three, four, five. So there's a potential for that, but it actually could easily be an ABC up as well. You can see I built this Fibonacci extension. We went just past the 1.0 extension. So that is very, uh, very likely could be an ABC up, which could signify that we're going to have a lower low. It's not clear yet. Um, in SILJ, the story is very similar. We've had a little bit less of a deep correction here, and this could convincingly be five up. We pretended that we have a one, two down here. However, just like with SIL, S-I-L, we have a retrace and the same thing happened. It could be an ABC up. So it's not the end of the world, however, because it could be the start of a diagonal, or maybe it is actually one, two, three, four, five with a little unconventional uh, structure, internal structure. This is actually pretty common in metals themselves. Sometimes uh, your pullbacks are substandard, non-standard. Uh, they pull back a little too far, not enough, or what, whatever. So when we look at the pullback since then, this was clearly a correction, ABC correction, and we have another very ambiguous bounce. I'm going to call this a B wave because it doesn't look particularly confidence inspiring. This was Sil J uh, going back to Sil, very vague again. It doesn't look clearly impulsive. So to give us a more definitive idea of what's going on, I'm going to shift to silver futures themselves. So this is actually um, silver in dollars per ounce, US dollars per ounce, and we had a bottom on February 3rd and. This doesn't look that correct. If this actually does look like an impulse, you can actually take this uh, little configuration here as potentially the first wave. If you do that, then, um, well, the proportions look relatively decent. You got your one, two. The third wave hit the 1.6 at target, which is exactly what you want to do. We had a deeper than expected retrace, and then we had a blow off. So this is actually, on, despite it being on a small scale, remember Elliott wave patterns are fractal in nature. This is actually very reminiscent of what we see in silver often where you have very deep pullbacks and explosive rally tops. A lot of you have heard of the uh, kind of the adage that silver and gold are, of course they correlate, but gold rallies first, silver lags behind and underperforms, but then it ends up overperforming, outperforming silver generally, and then it crashes harder too. So it's the more volatile, exciting version of gold essentially. And uh, again, that's the word on the street. One could argue plutonium and uranium are even crazier than that, but that is a topic for another video series. This is the big picture chart, and I'm going to start off with silver because that is the underlying base metal here. Uh, and I'd like to point out that despite the silver miner ETFs being based on silver prices, there's definitely correlation, just like there is with uh, XLE, you know, the energy ETF and oil, as well as uh, possibly crypto miners in the underlying crypto. It does not mean that they follow the same patterns. You often see divergences. You see the same thing with uh, GDX, GDXJ, and gold. Just because one is moving in a certain way doesn't mean that they're in the same part of their structure. So, for example, you may be seeing a B wave bounce in one of these, while one of the other things is actually finishing a fifth wave. So, some it's very important to look at each asset uh, on its own with its own pattern and chart. So, again, we're going to start with silver. We had our big blow off top in August 2020, and we've been in a correction seemingly forever. This is absolutely insane how long it's been. This is this is like a caricature of a fourth wave. In fact, fourth waves are supposed to be long and slow and demoralizing, but this is just un unbelievable, even by uh, metal standards. So we had a rally. Some Elliotticians do find this. Uh, they can count five waves up, one, two, three, four, five, possibly in an ending diagonal fashion. So maybe that's a fifth wave. As a matter of fact, I haven't counted that way in Sil J, I believe, which uh, I call that an alternate topping pattern right there. That was on February of uh, 2021, early part of February. However, I'm sticking with this story at the moment that we had a third wave top and we've been in an endless correction. This could easily be counted as a double zigzag and with this uh, W, X, and a Y wave. Reason for that being that this correction is three waves down. So this could easily be considered a, a Y wave regardless. We have some divergences in place in silver, and you can kind of see it's not the best thing, but we have a divergence from this spike down to this spike down. So that's a good sign of bottoming, and we may have something impulsive in the pipeline. This looked like five waves up, and I've actually built a Fibonacci sequence off of that. 
and actually I'm, I'm making a play an SLV based on this exact structure. So on the shorter term view, we have our bottom on September 30th. And uh, well, this doesn't go back far enough. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit more to give us a bit more of a picture of this thing. So September is way back here. I have to zoom back, zoom out even more than that to get the whole thing in the picture. And uh, clearly see, I actually have a fib extension built out here, calling this the top of a five wave initial rally. We had almost a double bottom. It basically is a double bottom, but I'll call that a, I'll call that a one, two. Works for me. If you look at it that way, we are toward, we made it towards the upper extent of where a C wave could go. We're in a consolidation. If we can break through the 2790 mark in silver, in uh, dollars per ounce, that means we're probably well on our way uh, to having a proper five of impulse. That'll be the top of our first wave. Look at the logarithmic chart. And uh, that would align, what did I say? About $20, $29. That's about where we'd expect our uh, 0.32 extension to be based on this overall part pattern. So it kind of aligns with the big picture. If you assume this is a giant one and a two, that's where you expect the, uh, the first wave to end up. There's also some confluence. Typically your first wave will end up about where the 1.382 extension is uh, based on your initial one, two. However, this is a little tricky because it's not clear where the one, two is. I'm actually measuring this based on this being the one, two. So a bit shallow. There's a chance that the one, two is actually down here. You take your pick. It's a little bit ambiguous. Metals are known for fifth wave extensions, and that's what you're seeing here. You can subdivide this third wave into a five-wave pattern. Maybe it looks like a one, two, three, four, five. Regardless of how you look at it, metals are crazy. And this is why it's exciting that we're entering potentially a fifth wave, because we have confluences in this blue box here. Silver could hit almost $33 an ounce as a minimum target, um, especially when you build out the Fibonacci extension pattern here. Not surprising at all to see... Uh, rallies overextend and uh, there's a lot of pent-up sentiment here this long correction grinding could mean that we're off uh for quite a bit of rallying the upper tire of this box is 40 dollars. that would be uh, potentially a again a one point uh, a, a fifth wave extension that is common in metals so with that being said that means we have the fundamentals necessary to push these etfs up so they may mimic what silver does they may move even more extremely so this is sill and uh Really, nothing's changed since the pattern that I uh, went over last time. This could be a second wave. That's what this red pattern is. If it is, we have way more room overhead. But the initial rally will look the same regardless, whether it's the uh, final top of fifth wave or this is a sub wave one of a much larger third wave. Doesn't matter. We're talking between $66 and $78. When? Depends. If, you're, if you believe in seasonality, we've seen rallies like this in the summertime. Actually, the last rally was in the summertime, and uh, we had rallies before the everything crashed 2020. If I recall correctly, some of those happened in the summer as well. I don't believe in seasonality myself, but there may be a natural cadence to the metals complex, especially silver. So with that being said, a lot of overhead. I actually did some projections here. So we're looking at a minimum, uh, if we hit $66, maybe 72% gain from where we are, and we can extend to as high as 100% gain. So again, very good gains if you're going non-leveraged. If you're going to buy options, make sure you buy a lot of theta because fifth waves take forever to materialize. We may still go lower. It's just, this is one of those things. If you're going to try catching this, sometimes it's better just to chase this from behind. Let this thing rally through resistance first. Um, so no reason to go to rush in. I did mention I have some SLB calls, but they have a lot of theta on them. They're pretty far out in time. So this is Sil J. The story is similar. You can assume that's a first wave top or that's the actual third wave. If we build out our Fibonacci proportions, we're looking at somewhere between possibly uh, well, $24.96 to $30. That is a long way up from where we are right now. That would be, actually, I might as well do the math since I have it all set up here. So we are sitting at about $14.62. If you go to the top of the box, that puts us about, let's see, that would be about a, uh, so anywhere from 60 to 112% gain. And again, depending on options liquidity, it's up to you whether you go with SIL, SIL J, or Silver. I'm going to have plenty of videos highlighting the setup if we do end up playing leverage on this thing, demonstrating which strikes, which expirations, where your stop out points are going to be. So don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss those. Overall, again, have to have patience. Let's not jump in. There is a chance you miss out if you wait too long, but there's so much meat left on the bone. You can chase it from behind. Not going to kill you. Definitely going to have these posted, these charts posted in the description below. So feel free to check those out. And if you've joined my video, don't forget to give me a like. Till next time, thank you for watching and happy trading.